Hi everyone, thank you for being here. And I, I did have a paper that I wrote and I said I'm gonna talk about this and talk about that, but I left the paper at, at home. So. so now I'm like, now I'm just gonna speak from my heart and um, tell you, tell you um, a little bit of the, the journey that I, that I went through. I have gone through so many hard situations in my life where, and yes, I might cry and get emotional. Um, <clears throat> so when I came here at the age of seven, I, I immigrated here with my father. Um, my mom and dad were here in the United States and they left me and my sister back at home until they raised enough money to go get us back, to go get us, and me and my sister came, at, I came at the age of seven, so I stayed with my aunt, and I didn't even know I had a dad and mom until the age of seven, so I thought my auntie was my mom. And when they tell me, okay, you're going with your mom and dad, I was like, what, I have parents? <laughs> so, so I came and, I, I felt like I was living with strangers, so I really didn't give my mom the opportunity to, to be a mother to me, but I tried. And then I had a brother that I was jealous of, so that was kind of complicated. But, um, so I, I, I used to, um, I used to uh, fight with him and I used to fight to try to get attention, but I wouldn't, so I started focusing on school. I was a good student while I was in elementary. I had a, a teacher that, that would take me to Knott's, Disneyland, Magic Mountain, every theme park you can think of, so that was because I would get good grades. But then I, I had a crush on someone. <laughs> So in middle school, I, I started um, dating and I, I became, um, when I started high school, I got pregnant at a young age. I got pregnant at the age of 17. And so now I'm in high school pregnant and I, I did get embarrassed. So I, I ended up um, going to a young parent education program where um, I would still go to school being pregnant and once you had your baby, they would take care of it while you're in school. So I ended up graduating from there. And that was when um, I had my son, I got married and left my house. I got emancipated at the age of 17. So I started young. <laughs> and um, so what I wanna share with you guys is that I, when I left home, I started living my crazy life and, and doing things that I wasn't supposed to be doing. So I, I started drinking and using. It was on and off, but it, but it wasn't as bad as it got when um, um, in 2013, I, I lost my son, Jonathan. He was um, ran over by a school bus. And um, that, that was the hardest thing I had to face in life. And I'm sorry. And that's when I got um, very, very heavily addicted to drugs and alcohol. And I didn't want to live. I didn't want to continue my life. And, I, I was just using and I really, really was trying to, to like not live and I didn't realize that my other two kids that were, that were there needed me. I was just focusing on my pain and focusing on what I felt and I wasn't being a parent. So uh, I was really mad at God. I, I believe in God, he's my higher power, but I thought he was um, actually, I don't know, punishing me because of the lifestyle that I lived. So, so I was really mad at him. I, always, I, I used to tell him, why did he take my son and not me? So those were the kind of conversations I would have with my higher power until one day, um, after my son passed and I was just like tired of drinking and using, 
I asked for help and I told him if he really existed to help me, to help me quit because I didn't want that kind of lifestyle. And so guess what happens? <laughs> so then he sends me help, right? But not in the way that I wanted it. So I, I was using it and, and yes, I'm gonna share something personal. I got in a fight with the father of my kids and he was being abusive to me. So I kind of like self-defense. I was trying to defend myself. I ended up stabbing him and it was an accident. It, 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 it wasn't supposed to happen that way, but it happened. And that's when I feel that's how God sent the help that I needed because I got incarcerated. So now I am incarcerated and and now I'm like really forced to stay sober, right? <laughs> so um, I decided that going, going to jail was, was already bad, but when they said I have to go to prison, then that's what, what was like rock bottom for me. I was going to be away. I was sent to prison for three years, and being away from my other two kids was very hard. Um, but I took this time to actually grieve the loss of my son, being sober. I took the time in prison to work on myself, on recovering from my addiction, and doing all the programs that I can do. So the court was telling me that if I wanted to get my kids back, I had to do a lot of programs and parenting. and. I did so many parenting classes, so many programs that by the time I got out, I said, okay, they're gonna give my kids back to me. Well, that didn't happen. They stay with my mother, so she has custody of my kids. And um, she didn't make it that easy for me because she said, if you end up going to jail one more time, I'm taking your kids, and she, she actually did. Um, I'm grateful, though, that they're with family and they're not in the system. So um, when, when I um, finished my sentence, I, um, I was happy, okay, I'm paroling, so, but then that's when immigration picked me up, and, and then now I'm faced in immigration detention, doing another seven more months of time fighting this case to get out. Uh, I was able to get out on bond and I was court ordered to go to a program. So after doing my recovery in prison, I also went straight to a program and this program was the only program, it's called A New Way of Life, it's in Los Angeles. Um, the director of it, the program is Susan Burton and she was the only one that, that actually took me in because I was undocumented. Every other program was saying no that they couldn't take me in because I, I, I wasn't a US citizen. So she took me in and I stayed in the program more than the year that I was supposed to. And they were the, they were, um, the support system I needed at that moment to, to, you know, to just keep on working on myself. And they, they wanted me to, to do something to like get some kind of income. And they, they helped me like start um, doing jewelry, but I didn't like it because you need to have so much patience for that. I didn't like it, so, so I, they ended up saying, well, you, you're gonna go to school. And I was like, no, I'm not. And they were like, yeah, you are. If you wanna stay in this program, you're gonna do something. So I ended up going to, um, to LA Trade Tech College in Los Angeles and I was I was trying to like show show them that there's no help for undocumented students but guess what so they were like hey there's the AB 540 um, affidavit where you can get your classes um, way um, your fee your fees waived so then I ended up enrolling and and then I realized that th that's where I had to be and I I stayed, I'm still there, and I'm, I'm making it um, worthwhile that, that since I'm in school, that, 
that that time that I'm away from my boys, that I'm going to work on myself and and work on my education so that the day that I do get them back, um, it's going to be worth it, you know. And I didn't lose my parental rights. Uh, I, I still have my parental rights, but I, in order for me to get my kids back, I need to 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 be able to support them and be stable. So I I'm facing a deportation case because after going to prison, um, the of, the offense that I committed it's an aggravated felony where it's a deportable charge. So so now um, now that I'm going to college, doing good and. Now I'm facing the deportation case where they want to deport me, and it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle, but I'm trying and, and staying in school and staying strong. Um, the 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 last day that that my son walked out of the door, when the day that he passed away, he said he was going to go to school and he was going to ace his classes for me. And I never saw my boy <laughs> ever after that. So when I asked the school if they can give me his grades, they said that he aced his um, California standard test. And, and that motivates me to, to stay in college because if he went to school and aced those tests for his mom, I said his mom can go to school and ace those classes for, for, for her kids. So that's what motivates me to stay in school. And um, I know that it's hard, it's really hard. Um, as Saba was mentioning, I was also under the intensive supervision program. I really hated that program. So I had to wear an ankle bracelet and appear every two weeks to report. After six months of having the ankle bracelet, um, I got it removed. And now I'm in the process of having my monitor calls. They're like voice recognition calls. So even if you were to give your phone to someone else, if it doesn't recognize your voice, it's like a, it's like a violation. And I'm always missing those calls because every time they call me on Wednesdays, I'm in this one building at my school which is the only office where there's no network. And every time they call me, I miss the calls. But I always call right away and I, and I tell them, you know, I'm inside the building where I have no network and I tell the officer, I see an immigration officer. Every time I go to court, I see an immigration officer. So I tell them, you know, hey, you, you know, you gotta change the times because when you call me, I'm always in that building and I don't want you to think I'm, I don't want to answer those calls, but it's not that. So anyways, I just want to leave you guys with, um, with um, le letting you guys know that, sorry, I think I touched something. Um, letting you guys know that, you know, it's, it's hard being undocumented. It's hard having a criminal background. That always follows you, even if, even if I expunge my cases, because I really did, I, I did, I expunge all my cases, except the prison case. That one, I have to get a pardon from the governor to, to do that, but I know I'm gonna do it one day. I'm, I'm gonna clean my record, and I just wanna be, um, I, I want everybody to take something from me that, you know, it, life is hard, it's really hard, but it, but you just don't give up, don't give up and and always have a strong support system around you. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you.